There is a continuous flood of serious games research reporting highly positive outcomes. That is really great. But we should take care. Generally, the heartwarming outcome of the research is that the users liked and appreciated the game very much. Isn't that suspect? To study how effective a game is, you would let a group of participants play the game and then administer a test to see what they've learned. Or they complete a questionnaire asking them if they liked the game. The weak part here is that there is nothing to compare. So we'd better perform a comparative study using two or more groups of participants to compare different approaches. For instance, the game and a book. This would reveal what works best, which can then be published in a research article. Whatever is published and claimed, it is our duty to be very critical because no research is capable of providing absolute truth. Let's discuss a few confounding factors that we should not overlook. First, a comparison of two different options is only valid if an equal amount of effort was put into them. This is not always the case, which affects the results. This principle of proportional effort can be easily explained in a graph. It says that the quality of a learning aid is proportional to the attention and effort that are put into it. If we have put more effort into the game, of course it will win. More effort means a better fit for purpose. So we shouldn't be surprised that the game turns out to be superior. It's a matter of effort. Working for months on a game means it will win anyway. A second disturbing factor surfaces when the game would fail, despite all efforts. Because studies with negative results are easily rejected by scientific journals, which produces positive bias. So we never get to know about failures. But there is hope. Lately some journals started to publish negative results also. A third disturbing factor is the novelty effect. This shows up when you confront participants with something really new and fancy. Providing test persons with the latest fancy new devices or high resolution graphics may easily result in increased attention, greater involvement and better performance as compared to subjecting them to existing approaches. Unfortunately, this novelty effect tends to diminish after a few weeks or months, when the persons have become familiar with the new approach. So the novelty effect may deceive you, suggesting positive outcomes. But after some time the effect fades, leaving no differences. A fourth disturbing factor is the Hawthorne effect. The Hawthorne effect is also called the observer effect. It says that test persons unwittingly tend to please the researcher and provide overly positive answers. Yes, I like the game very much. But this is irrespective of the true quality. Test persons are simply too helpful. And then we should not overlook statistics. You know there are lies, damned lies and there are statistics. Classical statistics is all about the p-value, which is the main criterion for having a statistically significant result. If p is found to be smaller than 0.05, which is 5%, then your data say that having no effect is unlikely. If the p-value exceeds its level, an effect is highly unlikely. However, this threshold of 0.05 is under attack. It was chosen by convention, but some claim it should be set to 0.01 or even smaller. If so, it would make almost all empirical studies irrelevant. Another issue is that the p-value is often misunderstood. It is often mistaken for a proof that an effect exists, it is often mistaken for an error state, and it is often mistaken for the probability of a successful replication. That's all incorrect. Furthermore, performing a randomized controlled trial in a practical educational setting suffers from many uncontrolled confounding variables. Personal conditions such as fatigue, a headache or getting divorced, as well as contextual conditions as simple as the noise in the testing room, the duration of the session or the time of the day, all affecting the study and making it hard to reveal any true effects. As explained, game studies may suffer from various flaws. Therefore, we shouldn't take any outcomes for granted. We should check for efforts made in comparative studies, any positive biases, the novelty effect, the Hawthorne effect, and of course, the statistics should be right. We should be very self-critical when investigating serious games in order to better understand what works well in what conditions. <laughs>